I got a very interesting text in the morning from one of my students who ended up in HCL for the role of financial planning and financial analysis. And all of a sudden, I started realizing that there are so many students who have ended up in so many different places. Let me just make a list of where our students are currently working right now. So I found out some of them are working at McKinsey. Some of many of them are working at investment banks. So some examples are here. And all of a sudden, I started realizing this course has helped them so much. So let me just make a video about this course, the details of investment banking, the details of financial modeling and how it would actually help you, what you will actually learn from it and what you have to look out for. I'm not saying do this course with us. I'm not saying do this course with someone else. Figure out what suits you. Le figure out what you will learn from this and then make an informed decision. So without further ado, let's directly jump into the details of this course. Okay, first things first, what do you learn in it? Now in financial modeling, you learn how to make projections for the future. Let me give you an example. Suppose there is business A and this business made some money. Uh, let's take an example of 100 rupees. It made 100 rupees in 2021. It made 100 rupees in 2022. How much should it make in 2023? Simple example, 100, 100. Ideally, it should keep on making 100, 100, 100. Simple. Another example, let's suppose a company made 100 in 2021, 200 in 2022. How much should it make in 2023? Think about it. So 100, then it moved to 200. I presume it should go to 300 or maybe 400, right? So we are expecting this to grow. Now, if this was an example of Facebook, Google, some of these tech giants, maybe the example is good. Yes, makes sense. Now let me change the example. This is of a company which is specifically into publishing newspapers. Now that's a dying business, right? And I give you another uh, uh, information, a piece of information that in 2022, in 2021, our profit was 100. In 2022, the profit is 200, but that profit comes from selling a piece of land which this business had. Out of this, majority of the money comes from that. So 100, 200. What do you think happens in 2023? It should ideally go down, right? So it should not be like 100, 200 and then 300, 400. No, it should be 100, 200 and then ideally less than 100 because the money that you made in 2022 was actually because of the land that you sold, not because your business was growing. So this we understood. This was very simple. But how would you do this on a company where you have absolutely no idea? So there you need to take assumptions by what growth rate would this company grow? So in the first example, we, where we took 100, 200 and 400, that was a growth rate of 100%, which is not likely. Ideally, we do see that in some businesses, but not usually. And in the second business where we were talking about newspapers, that also does not happen. The growth rate is somewhere, somewhere between 3 to 10%. Even a good company has a 3 to 10% growth rate. Now, how do you analyze that? That comes to your discretion. You get to decide that. What assumptions do you take? You have to choose that. So that is the basis of financial modeling. You have to model the future. You have to tell what would happen in the future. And if you take assumptions, if I know that this is the money that I'll make next year, this is the money that I'll make next to next year. And for so long, I'll make this, this is much amount of money. Then I can tell you what is the worth of business today. If I do not know how much Finlado would make next year, how much Finlado would make next to next year, I cannot value the business today. So financial modeling is nothing but making projections and then finding the present value of those projections. Now, what do we mean by present value? Let's suppose someone is going to give me 100 rupees next year. Are those 100 rupees equal to the 100 rupees today? Think about it. Someone is going to give me money in 2023, 100 rupees. And I have 100 rupees today in 2022. Which one is more worthy? Which one is more has more purchasing power, let's just say. Definitely the money that I have today, right? Because next year there will be inflation. Next year there will be tons of things and there's uncertainty. Today I get money. Tomorrow I do not know. There's this saying, uh, a bird in hand is better than two in the bush. So I take the money that I have today. I take this 100 rupees today. But what if someone tells me 100 today or 150 after a year? Just think about it. Would you take 100 today or 150 after a year? Maybe 150 after a year, right? Maybe. 
So that is how we find, that is where we have to find the present value of this money. So this 150 may be equal to 100 today. How do we find that? That is the concept of discounting. So in financial modeling, all we do, so we make projections. So we say 100 last year, 200 this year. So most probably 300, 400, 500, 600 for XYZ years, 1, 2, 3 years, 2023, 20, 24, 25. And then we find the present value of all these. We find the value of this money, all that money today. And once we have that money, we can say that this is the value of the firm. So that is entire financial modeling in a nutshell. But how do we do that? We do all of that on Excel. So this is the whole concept of financial modeling. Now the no, next question is, what should you look out for in a financial modeling course? Ideally, there are two things that you should look out for in a financial modeling course. One is who is teaching the course. Second one is, do you have a live project at the end of the course? And can you make financial models on your own? So for our course, we have people, experts from finance industry itself, people from Goldman Sachs teaching this course. So that's covered with us. Now, do you get live projects with us? Yes, you definitely get two live projects with us. Plus you can make models on your own when you do our course. Now, what is live project? What do you learn from it? That's important. And you can search for other institutes as well. If they're offering you this, that's a good thing. Go with them also. I'm not saying just join us. Any institute that is providing you with live projects and telling you that yes, you can make financial models on your own after the completion of that course. That's a good thing because you can make those models, put them up on LinkedIn. You do not want the institute to get you job. The institute will never get you job. Trust me, take this from me. There are institutes that are that might just claim that they'll help you with job. Even we can claim that, but we do not want to because that's a straight up lie. If you're not good at it, you'll not get a job. If you're good at it, you'll get a job. That's as simple as that. Plain as uh, black and white. If you're good at it, you'll get a job. If you're not good at it, you'll not get a job. It's like art. And the institute cannot do anything to give you a job. We can train you. That's all we can do. And that's what we do at Finland. We train you. We do not give you a job. But there are institutes who might just claim that we might give you a job. They do not. They just claim it uh, for the purpose of uh, getting enrollments. We do not want to do that. I'm going to be as blunt as I can. Okay, coming back to the topic. I'm so sorry. I got distracted. So I was saying, live projects. What do you do in a live project? You make analysis on different companies. You'll get data and that live project will have a solution. It will have a complete uh, answer as to these were the steps that you had to follow. That live project you'll have to do on your own. You'll have to make a model on your own and that will have a solution. In real life, you'll not have models that will have solutions because it is on your discretion. You can have some other uh, inputs. You can think about a company in, in a different way. I can think about a company in a different way. So we can have different assumptions while making a model. But that live project will have a correct answer. Is that correct answer the only answer that it can have? No, it can have your answer as well. But then you'll have to defend your live project. So we will have those. And after that, you will make models on your own. You will take data. You will be at a position where you can download the data on your own and model on your own. It will be completely from scratch. You will not require any knowledge. You will be starting from absolute basics. We'll be starting from the basics of Excel and complete the whole course. So these are the details about investment banking and financial modeling course with Finladder. You can go to the description and check out the course for any other details, any other questions, you could fill the form in the description and we'll reach out to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're interested in CFA, you can watch this video. And if you're interested for any of our other courses, you can also watch this video. Thank you so much.